Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. This is podcast number 89. God, 89. So, so many hours wasted doing this. Not the point. This week on the podcast, we are talking Independence Day Resurgence and uh, the Star Trek fan film rules and how that affects all of the different fan projects. So, let's get... Let's kick it off by saying hello to Amy. Morning, y'all. Saying hello to Eugene. Hello. Saying morning to Stuart. Hello. And saying welcome back from the dead, Scarecrow. Good morning. <laughs> so EJ yeah, he still sounds dead. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Frankenstein, <sighs> Frankenstein has still got to add the second dose of electricity. Then he'll be fine. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, EJ may or may not be joining us later. Um, he's a tiny little bit busy at this second, but he wants to talk about Independence Day and the fan film stuff as well. So, we'll might have to circle back a little bit when he jumps on. So, until then, let's get this show started. So first up, we have Independence Day. We've all seen it except for Eugene, um, because he's okay. been and Amy and Amy. <laughs> so, so he's, he's not alone. So, um, but me and Stuart and Scarecrow have all seen it, and we had some fairly mixed feelings about it, uh, especially EJ when he watched it. Oh, we yeah. I'll leave that for when he gets on, assuming he gets on. Um, so yeah, so Stuart, what were your thoughts on the movie? Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I went and saw it Friday night with uh, Jody. Uh, we had a full cinema, and it was great. Is that it? It's just that it was great. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we do the spoiler-free review first. Bit first, so Scarecrow, what do you think when you watched it? I really enjoyed it. I thought it did the original justice. The character development was good, and it was nice to see the new generation and how they tied into the original story. Yeah. Me, I really enjoyed it. Those who been watching Save Sci-Fi saw my sort of spoiler-free review on there. Um, I'm actually in the process of trying to find where the hell it is, so I can... <laughs> Yay, prepared... Preparedness. I blame... Readiness. Yeah, I blame Michael for posting yeah, fifty goddamn things, and I can't scroll down fast enough to find it. Uh, whatever. Um, so anyway, yeah, I went and I watched it. Uh, day it came out over here, which is a little bit before the states got to see it. Haha, <laughs> Australia wins again. Um, and I really enjoyed you still it. Hate you. I know. It's just, just I love the hate. The hate is just like, send me the children's tears. They are delicious. <laughs> ah. Found the thing finally. Okay, so sp- the spoiler-free review was, um, it's along the lines of I've never been happier to be wrong about something. I uh, to be wrong about something. I remember when this movie was announced that I said it was unneeded, and I was totally wrong about that. This movie not only feels like the first movie, it improves upon it in almost every way. Um, it was a delight to watch. The only thing I felt was missing was that mysterious thing that makes a 9 a 10. So I'll dial that down a little bit from there, and I will say there was a couple of things that it was... A couple of things that it was sort of short on, but for the most part, overall, it was it was really good. Um, good action scenes, good sort of battle. The only thing that I felt was a little bit lacking was... Um, in some parts was tension. Um, but... That said, when you're watching a movie about aliens invading Earth, there's just not honestly tension isn't the first thing on your mind, especially in Independence Day movies. Um, so, yeah. so anyway, let's move on to the spoilerific section. So, 
For those who haven't seen it, want to plug their ears, feel free to do so. So, starts off with them... Starts off with them sort of doing a bit of a... Um, the Well, the first chunk of the movie is them sort of doing the celebration for 20 years since the War of 96. Scarecrow, you're fired. Oh, come on. It's not even... I'm not even doing this willingly. That's just my bloody notification stuff. <laughs> Still fired. Um, so, yeah, it starts off with sort of the 20-year celebration, setting up a turret on the moon and um, showing sort of the, the piloting skills of the next generation that are coming through and who's... and that sort of thing. And it sort of establishes the sun as sort of the new Will Smith and sets up where the president is. He's gone totally the crazy end of crazy. Um, the new president is... Um, was she in the first movie? I can't remember. I don't know. I was reading it. It's, I don't think she was, but I'm not 100% no, sure. I'm pretty sure she is a new character. I'm pretty sure she's a new character, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so it starts off with sort of this big celebration of the 20 years and how the world's come together, peace on Earth, all that sort of stuff. My first thought is... You know. Um, it then shows... Jumps over to... Um, keep going to call him Will Smith. I know he's not Will Smith. Uh, <laughs> names. Why is it always names? I hate names. God damn it. Uh, the, new, the new Captain Hiller. No, 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 no. It jumps over to... What's his face in the desert? Oh, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, Gold blue, but how did I forget that? I'm sorry, Jeff. You're, you're spectacular. Um, <laughs> especially, especially, especially the '90s. You, you, we just couldn't get enough of you. It's, it's not the point. Um, <laughs> point is that um, cuts over to him, and it shows that one of the city ships, the giant structure we saw floating, um, was actually a shitty a city ship with its landing gear down. So. Um, which, uh, sort of, that revelation was actually pretty cool. Imagine, a, and these guys have been fighting a ground war for the better part of ten years to fight off and finally defeat this last, last sort of city ship. And as a result, all of, sort of, the surviving aliens they captured were taken back to Area 51 and put in a giant, sort of, containment-y building ideally. A glass jar? Yeah, effectively a giant glass jar. Where they've been sort of interrogating them and whatnot for the past twenty odd years, learning their technology, adapting it in our own, making all sorts of cool looking fighter jets. Um, but they discover in that ship a, distr a distress signal's been sent. Soon there are. I'm pretty sure. No, they're still on the ship, and um, they detect that Saturn, the defense grid at Saturn's gone offline, and they're like, "What the hell?" That's really weird. Um, and they sort of show that Saturn's rings are getting totally messed up and all sorts of shenanigans are happening out there. So it's sort of like, yes, yeah, that's not good. And it cut to the moon. And you see that all of the sudden, all of the ground and stuff starts getting sucked up into a wormhole, black hole dealy thingy. And then out pops a spaceship. Out of hyper, well, what could only be described as sort of a hyperspace sort of jump point, um, and out pops this giant spherical spaceship. I'm like, oh, it's the Borg. No, it's got a weird-looking eye line, dearly. It looks like the uh, Marvin off Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy's giant ass head. Oh, it's a giant ass Marvin head. <laughs> I wonder if it's. The, I wonder if it's. I actually thought it looked depressed. more like a. I thought it looked more like a Cylon eye eye slot, but instead of being that evil, nasty red, it was more of a... Yeah. My eye, slot, my eye slot is blue, and I am here to help. I am not here to be a dick. Yeah. Well, we haven't, haven't got that far yet. So the this, this ship appears above the moon base, and it's sort of hovering there, and everyone's like, oh shit, they're back. Fire the laser! <laughs> it's like, um, well, considering last time they just flat out attacked without provocation, this time they're just hovering there... Maybe we don't attack them, is sort of Goldblum's response, and but he's vetoed by the other world leaders, and they attack and destroy this thing. So, 
Goldblum and Meteor's like, yep, I need to get up there to check this thing out. They're like, no, you're coming back to Washington. And Mister's flying a space tug from that was helping set up the laser earlier. Steals one, flies down, picks him up, goes up to the moon. And they're up the moon, having a look at this wreckage. They find what looks like the Matrix of Leadership, just scaled up. <laughs> no, it looks like the Matrix of Leadership properly scaled for Optimus Prime in the first place. <laughs> it's still a bit big for that. It's about twice the size yeah, of what it would be for Optimus Prime. The point is, it looks... Yeah, it depends on... Yeah. It looks pretty close. It looks like the Matrix of Leadership, and they sort of grab this thing, and the um, new alien ship rocks up and just starts wrecking house. Um, so they fuck off back... First. Yeah. They fuck off back to Earth, and then somehow, all of the buildings from all over the eastern side of Asia get sucked up into the air and come crashing down on London. Because we've got chunks of Dubai, chunks of Shanghai, chunks of friggin' all sorts of shit like that just landing on London because reasons? So, we know that the Asia Pacific, the Asia area and specifically Europe quite heavily have been very severely damaged. Um, it also, this thing's landing gear. Do you want to call it landing gear or do you want to just call it, I'm going to fucking take chunks out of your entire surface of your planet? Whatever, sort of, me- sort of almost um, Cooler's Revenge. Don't forget the, that the the giant cancer f- lump from Cooler's Revenge in Dragon Ball Z. It sort of looks like that, just sort yep. of sticking to the side of a planet. <laughs> uh, it gets better. Oh yeah. They, again, they prove that they don't like landmarks. Yeah. And wipe out most of London. Yeah, like I said, all of the major cities in the world get sucked up into the air and dumped on London. Why London? No one knows. Never explained. Yeah, well, had to deal with it. Yeah. it was either going to be London or Australia. Which one would you prefer? <laughs> it's it's the ultimate Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> wrong for so many reasons. Just so so wrong. Oh, I was going to make reasons. a Brexit joke later in the news. <laughs> so beat it. you got beat into it, Stuart. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking. Yeah, it's there's one way to make sure that. Well, put it this way. The UK tried to leave Europe. The aliens were like, good luck with that. We're bringing Europe to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, anyway. It's discovered that the ship that had landed on the Earth was actually boring a deep ass hole. The new ship that rocks up parks, so it's sort of the guts of it are over the trench in the mid Atlantic, and it starts boring down, um, aiming for the core of the planet because they want to suck out our planet's core and our. Juicy, juicy liquid insides. Um, because that's what they use to power their ships, which I think is weird, to say the least. Just go to Venus. It's still got a... Well, does Venus... Venus may not have a liquid core. Anyway, point is... Because um, our core is so dense and juicy, they're like, oh, boom, boom, we're going to norm on this. So they create all sorts of hell and havoc. Landing. Um, Will Smith's wife dies when the building crumbles and... Other people die. Lots and lots of people die. Um, mostly nameless characters. But actually, I think she's the only death of a character returning from the previous movie that we're gonna. That isn't she. No. No. Yeah. Because we're not. We don't talk. More. We don't talk about the end. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, point is. Um, point is they sort of she didn't realize... have much of a role and she's gone from being a stripper to a doctor yeah that's a fair point um working at a hospital at least as a nurse um so they gtfo the all the the military does what it does launches a counter strike with uh cold fusion warheads which i was a little bit like oh can i have one no <laughs> and then which immediately <laughs> get wrecked like, this is... They, oh, that's right. They, they discover a massive heat source and they're like, oh, look, that's probably a queen. And it's like, oh, God, no. Don't you dare go episode one on me. Um, and they then go and try and do a raid on the queen, just like um, in the first Independence Day movie. And unlike the first Independence Day movie, they can actually hold their own against the alien fighters in this one. 
the different because they could actually break through the shields and take them out. The problem being that they're outnumbered about a hundred kajillion to one, and so they get eventually taken out, and their ships get trashed and dumped and destroyed, and they all what, get in London. Uh, no, no, inside the alien ship eventually, um, and the Nova bombs don't work, and all sorts of shenanigans. Back at Aero 51, they managed to open up the Matrix of Leadership and free Marvin, the Marvin's head, the pressed, manic, manically depressed robot Marvin's head, um, which floats around like Dinklebot. Or, um, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. What's the orb thing from Halo called? Guilty Spark. It floats around like Guilty Spark. And so... This guy that's sort of been annoying and sort of floating around and has done nothing all movie. I'm like, he's going to touch it and activate it, isn't he? So he touches it and activates it. <laughs> like, every, every scan we've done on this thing, he's telling us there's nothing there, but there's definitely something there. I wonder what it feels like. Ping! Turns on. It's like, hi, I am friendly. It's like, why did you shoot me? My ship is gone. I will help you now. <laughs> it's like, okay, whatevs. Which point the queen gets an alarm that the, the backstory given is that the Independence Day aliens have been around for quite a long time and have ravished sort of galaxies sort of going around planet to planet just wrecking house as they can um okay it's gonna be two seconds okay um so yeah they've been going around wrecking house destroying destroying things taking cause of planets and stuff like that and they were doing it unchallenged until they met the Marvin aliens and at which point they actually had a decent fight on their hands and the Marvin aliens put up a fight and eventually managed to sort of, they eventually lost but they managed to sort of succeed to a point where they escaped a bit and right now we have EJ joining us on the call EJ can you hear me? Ooh, can I break Skype again? Please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be a podcast if you don't break Skype. <laughs> so so we're, we're just doing the rundown of what happened. So um, we're up to about the part yeah, where... The yeah, there, where the Marvin Martian... Mar, not Marvin the Martian. Marvin, the depressed manic robot head that's floating around, um, is sort of back backstorying the backstory to backstory the backstory. Anyway, so he's explaining... Yeah, she basically says, oh, you're not the only ones they've been killing. Yeah, they've been wiping out heaps of people, but you're the first one that have actually managed to fight them off that wasn't us, so good work on that. <laughs> By the and, way, they're, and they're pissed. And we've a thousand years, but uh, yeah, we're all dead now, thanks. So, so much for your ally. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, this is the last sort of thing of that species, and like, okay, cool. They then realize that Mother's very angry. The Queen has disconnected herself from the main ship and is coming to hunt down Marvinbot in the most spectacular way possible. So... You, you, you mean the Queen from Aliens, right? Yeah, the Queen from Aliens. Um, exactly. And, and then... The, they, they, so they put Marvinbot in the isolation room ideally that locks them all down so they can't sort of detect it anymore and create yeah, a... Bo bo Radiation, yeah. Yeah. And then um, switch on a fake signal that and have that leaving that base so that um, so that it sort of decoys the queen away because we're like, look, we she baited us. Let's bait her. Let's use her own tactics against her. Um, and so they lure her out into the middle of the desert and set up a force field trap around her, almost like they did with the Death Stinger and Zoids. Sort of pinned her in place so she can't escape. And then had the President Whitmore detonate Nova Bombs in her face and just wreck everything. Mm -hmm. Did it work on her? And it's like, yay, we won, we won. The Queen, um, yeah. um, the queen is dead. Long live the Queen. Wait. <laughs> um, and, they just, and they're all sort of happy and celebrating. And for whatever stupid reason, they shut the shield down. Still don't understand why they did that. I would have kept the shield up until they at least sort of combed through the wreckage and made sure that she's definitely fucking dead. 
Shock, wasn't... shock horror gasp. The ground, exp- the, the, the spaceship explodes apart and out climbs the queen, who is like an alien, but like, what, 50, 100 meters tall? She's she's effective that giant tripod looking thing you see in the trailer. Um, well, she is the giant tripod looking thing in the trailer. Um, and it looks straight at Goldblum. It's like, you. And he's like, oh, damn. Run away. I'm in a school bus. Run away. Run, 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 run. So, and the fighter jets engage her and try and take down the shield and um, eventually manage to take her, um, take out her gun just. She gets to the base, starts wrecking house and all sorts of bad things happen. Then eventually she manages to get to Marvin the Martian alien and then they manage to destroy her. Um, so, yeah. And then once she dies, everything goes. Star Wars Episode One and falls from the sky and dies. Then the giant ta- alien ship that's parked on the planet goes, you know what, I'm heading back to everybody else in the fleet. Later, bitches. And it fucks off. And everyone's like, well, yay, uh, we survived. Uh, uh, Marvin, the depressed android, told them that's what would happen because they have some sort of telepathic hive mind because yeah. every alien has a telepathic hive mind and all you need to do is kill the boss. Yeah. Well, to be honest... The, the hive mind was established fairly early on in the original movie, so that didn't feel like too much of a stretch to me. Um, well, they shit, they communicated with telepathy. They didn't establish a hive mind. Well, yeah, but communicated with telepathy when there's a large amount of people communicating with telepathy, it implies a hive mind. They mm, not necessarily. That's that's not a leap I would I would necessarily yeah. make. Yeah, well, they already but, they already figured out they had a hive mind back in the first movie, so it's not exactly anything new. Well, they didn't figure what, out a hive what, mind what, in the I, first I, movie. My point is that it's a logical next step. Is if they communicate yeah. with telepathy, we can sort of expand upon that and say they've got a hive mind, and it's not a massive, massive leap. That's my point. So anyway, they leave, and Marvin the Martian's like, uh, Marvin the the manic depressed robot head is like, oh, by the way, I have interstellar travel, and since you guys seem pretty good at killing these guys. I'm going to give you an Estella travel, and you get to be the new protector of the planet that we've set up full of other alien species that have sort of managed to save from these guys, but still lost their planet. So, it's like, yay, we're going into Estella now? So. A refugee, uh, yeah. a refugee uh, yeah. planet. Because uh. humans are really good with refugees. We can't even tolerate refugees of our own fucking species. What are the odds we're going to tolerate refugees of a different species? Well, after something like 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 this, we better get very used to dealing with refugees because pretty much um, Asia, pretty much Asia, Britain, France, Canada, England, Mexico are kind of like fucked. No, 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 it's, 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 it's worse than that. <laughs> it came, Shanghai was destroyed. Like some of the buildings that fell from the sky were were Asian. So you've got all of China, all of India, the Middle East because they've got Abu Dhabi, the giant spy majiga. You've um, that's. WWE, oh yeah, because it? it landed. It landed, and it basically oh, was yeah. covering Europe um, and and like a good chunk of China and, yeah, and Asia, exactly. Like and, the, the, and, the, and also the east coast of the U.S. So yeah, if the death toll from the previous movie was in the 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 hundreds of millions, the death toll from this movie would be at least three billion. I don't know if it'd be that. Bad. India, China, Middle East, Europe. There's 7 yeah, billion people every, on... Every, in every single one of those countries would be dead. I know, but if well, you factor in... If, if you factor in, say, 20% of the population of that area, you're still looking at getting upwards of a billion people. Oh, sure. So, sure. it'd be, at the very least, a billion plus dead. Oh, that, that, that I could agree with. It could be close to a billion, yeah. So... Or above a billion. So, yeah. Um... So, yeah. So, anyway... I oh, hope no Brexit happens, then. <laughs> who, who needs a Brexit when we've moved all of the continental Europe and Asia and chunks of Africa and the Middle East on top of it? It's almost like the, the, the air brake, as they were slowing down to land, all of the gravitational force just centred on London. Why? No particular reason. Have fun catching all those buildings. <laughs> My question is, is, if something that big actually did rendezvous, like, with Earth... Oh, it would mess up our would... orbit big time. 
Exactly. How would it screw with our orbit? And like, you would it get hotter, colder? Would it send us straight into the sun? Would we? To be honest, the, off out the first system? one was stated to have a quarter of the mass of the moon. That alone would have fucked with our orbit. This thing was bigger. So, yeah, it would have definitely messed with our orbit in one way, shape, or form. Um, this thing was, like, the size of a moon. Oh, this thing, that thing was huge. But, yeah, um, well, the, the first one was only a quarter. The second one was way bigger. Anyway, um, so, out of ten reviews. Start with Scarecrow. Out of ten. Uh, solid eight. Solid eight. Hit a lot of good, lot of good points and uh, nostalgia for me, so that got an that did pretty well. Not to mention, I, there was a number of times where I felt like quoting the original movie just out of shits and giggles because it was that damn good. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, give it an eight as well. Just kind of sad there wasn't any like really big inspirational speech in it. Well, there was three really big inspirational speeches, but at the same time, yeah, they were very like, like eh. No, no, yeah, there, there, there were no big inspirational speeches, but that wasn't for lack of trying. Yeah, that that's a better no, way no, of putting it. I know, it. it just... Yeah, I know, I just really missed that big... Oh, yeah. Speech well, see, makes you go, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, see, my question is, the speech that he did at the end of Independence Day, the movie, is played at one point in this as if it was recorded. My question is... Yeah, in the beginning. How? How the hell did they record that? <laughs> he was speaking impromptu... <laughs> Fucking megaphone! How was it? I mean, did it have? Everywhere. Did it have a built-in, built-in recording well, dealie? Did you know in the mid nineties they had cell phone cameras? <laughs> so, yeah. so cell phones the size of small planets. Have fun with that. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, for some that, reason that, that made me. Uh, uh, just made me think. Um, the original Independence Day mothership was digital, that's why it was so small. The second Independence Day mothership is one of the older models, it's analog, that's why it's so big. <laughs> uh, I'm hopeless. Uh, now, I know EJ has different feelings about it than we do, so I was glad to get him on so we could have a listen to what his thoughts on it were. Now, I'll leave my review until after we hear EJ's thoughts. Um, all right. Uh, every time I think about it or discuss it, it goes down another point. Uh, I'm currently at five. Oh, wow. Um, I, I might put it at a four. Um, visual effects were great. Acting was great. Well, well, some of the, some of the green screen at the end was kind of mediocre. I love the cinematography, but the most important part of any movie is the story is the script. And that, that, Honestly, oh, and plus there's a nostalgia factor that's making it go up a couple points. But the, the, the script, the story was, was piss poor, honestly. It was lazy, uh, and, and they were just trying to – it was obviously just uh, a, a money grab trying to, to uh, uh, get money floating off the heels of, of the first one. Um, and while I'm, I'm, I, I'll be the first to say that the, well, as much as I love and, obs- and I'm obsessed with the first one, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to win an Oscar. Uh, and still this was, was, it, it just, it didn't have the charm and many points of the story, all, a lot of the character moments were just, uh, I didn't give a shit. Um, I didn't fall in love with any of the characters. They, it was, uh, first off, they had way too many characters. So whenever they had a moment that they were trying to make you care about the characters, it was obvious they were trying to get you to care about the characters. And it wasn't just this natural progression. It was just, uh, oh, you're supposed to feel sad now. Oh, you're supposed to be happy now. Oh, you're supposed to care now. Um, and it just, it was forced. The whole thing was forced. Uh, what they needed to do is reduce the number of characters and be smarter and be smarter with them and create more personal attention. For example, um, uh, Jeff Goldblum's character and the general who later becomes president uh, really got along way too well. If you had them uh, antagonistic a bit, you could have had a lot of fun. And then... Uh, I don't know why they decided they needed like 10 pilots 
Um, I guess maybe they're trying to make up for the fact that Will Smith wasn't there. But if you got rid of uh, if you got rid of of the white guy pilot and just focused on on Will Smith's character's son, and then focused on him trying to live up <clears throat> to example, maybe um, uh, Will Smith's character's um, uh, legacy and him not feeling like he was up to it, and maybe he screws up in that first major battle, and then when he finally does, you know, become victorious at the end, he, you know, you, you have this whole, you can have this whole plot of him redeeming himself with that. Yeah. Um, but, like, there are just all these opportunities for stuff like that that they just totally lost because it was like, oh, we need to have 20 billion characters and we need to make it, like, uber, uber, uber action-y because we need to outdo the last one because we have tech now to do that. Um... And that, yeah, I think they I think they pulled the same issue uh, or the same thing that that J.J. Abrams pulled with uh, Star Trek into, into Darkness, and figured that you'd be so busy with the action that you you would miss the fact that the plot is shit. Right, well, say me, I rate story on par with acting, visual effects, special effects, production value, that sort of stuff. And I do that because a good story can be made crap with bad acting. And a bad story can be made better, I wouldn't say go as far as good, with good acting, if you know what I mean. Like, they, they, they all sort of intermingle and interplay with each other. Which is why, when I rated mine, I gave this story a 5 out of 10. It's not the best story, for the reasons that EJ just highlighted. Acting, overall, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the, the acting and the way that different characters were played for the most part. A couple of the characters felt a little bit forced to be there, like um, Goldblum's dad, which is teleporting around randomly for no apparent fucking reason. One point he was at a retirement village, the next point he's on a boat, and there's men that happened like fairly close together based on the other shots that are in between, and I was like, did he just teleport onto a boat in the middle of the Atlantic? Okay, whatever's movie. <laughs> whatever movie. Um... The, but yeah, other than that, the the, the acting was good. Um, when when the mother died, you sort of felt it in Will Smith's kids' sort of sort of reaction. Like he was very upset that he couldn't sort of do anything to stop it. So um, yeah, I'll rate. Yeah, but I care. Nobody cared. Yeah, because when Vivian Fox because she was on screen for like ten seconds. That's, nobody cared. Um, she's like, look the mother, look the stripper from the previous movie, and she's dead. Um, yeah. Um, the visual effects looked fucking amazing. I don't know anyone here, with the exception of the little bit at the very end, which I'm more than happy to ignore, um, would disagree that the visual effects look spectacular. Um, the music, like I, I always put more weight in music than a lot of people do because I like to look at it as the bigger picture. And the music in this not only felt like the original stuff; it was enjoyable to listen to. Um, the production value overall, again, it was parts where it felt a little bit sort of, they had this much, they could have done more with it, but for the most part it was, I felt it was really good and I gave that a fairly high rating. The average end score for me was 8 out of 10 across all those points. With the story being yeah, I... the big sort of, the big sort of pull down out of all of that. Yeah, the thing is, is um, the most like like I said, the for for me the most important thing is the story, and the reason for that is because like you can have shitty VFX, but you can be forgiven if it's a really good story. And the acting, you know, you might have the best actors in the world, but if they have nothing to work from, then uh, story wise, then they're not going to be able to do their job and and show what they can do, and everything is just based on the story. Uh, the VFX, you know, or uh, the music, if there's no, you know, dramatic points or, or, or what have you, and the story isn't constructed well, the music isn't going to be, music can improve that, but it's not going to be able to make it shine, you know? Yeah. So, anyway, that's, that's yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I'm not, I'm not saying the story isn't important. I, I agree. The story is definitely the, the main reason you go to watch a movie is for the story. But I'm saying these other parts play. Uh, all I'm saying is these other parts play a role in how that can be sort of done. Like, for whatever oh, stupid fucking reason, I can't 
possibly fathom, um, Sharknado and that have done fairly well. But well, I, th- the I think that's story more in them is bloody. The story in it is just vacant. Story? What story? I'm just there's no level of scientific advancement that we can possibly reach between now and the end of time that could detect a story in those movies. <laughs> And well, yet, I, I think people watch those just because of, of the action. How stupid it is! Like it, it's a joke. Yeah. So, so anyway. But uh, yeah. Right, and, and I was just saying, uh, and and just my writing is so much lower is, uh, is because the the story has such a crucial role in all that. Then that's the main thing I judge by, and you know everything else. You know, you might get a point or two or three out of me on a 10 point scale but the the main thing is going to be that story and so you're going to get a bad rating if that's not there so i'm not going to give it a b you know 80 yeah. percent if the story is you know all right fair enough all right well let's move on to this the star trek stuff then um the star trek fan film stuff now okay. a lot of hat has happened in the last sort of what was that they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're about okay. to sort of break down. Uh, this is effectively Eugene's segment, so I'm going to let him run it. Um, basically, we just gonna... yeah, we're going to for, for, we're going to forego the hobby report because Paramount came came out with their guidelines for for Star Trek fan films, and I'm just going to read the the guidelines verbatim, and then we'll go over the over the responses from the various fan films and yeah. and what the fallout has been. Uh, guideline the, the, number one. The fallout has been more devastating than the first Independence Day mothership destroying a city, but that's not the point. Um, so yeah. I wanted to tie it together. Anyway. Okay. Um, Enough! Guideline number one. The fan and production must be less than 15 minutes for a single self-contained story or no more than two segments, episodes, or parts, not to exceed 30 minutes total, with no additional seasons, episodes, parts, sequels, or remakes. Two, the title of the fan production or any parts cannot include the title Star Trek. However, the title must contain a subtitle with the phrase a Star Trek fan production in plain typeface. The fan production cannot use the term official in either its title or subtitle or any marketing or promotions or social media for the fan production. So they can't say this is the a, official Facebook page for this movie. Which is sort of silly. But anyway, keep going. Right. Three, the content in the fan production must be original, not reproductions, recreations, or clips from any Star Trek production. If non-Star Trek third-party content is used, all necessary permissions for any third-party content must be obtained in writing. Four, If the fan production uses commercially available Star Trek uniforms, accessories, toys, or props, these items must be official merchandise and not bootleg items or imitations of such commercially available products. Five, the fan production must be a real fan production, i.e. creators, actors, and all other participants must be amateurs cannot be compensated for their services and cannot be currently or previously employed on any Star Trek series, films, production of DVDs, or with any CBS Paramount Pictures licensees. Yeah. Six. Which effectively means fan- that they, they effectively imply that pretty much anyone that is an actor in any way, shape, or form is not a fan of Star Trek and therefore cannot create a fan film. Continue. Oh, not um, just good actors, at... CG guys, prop guys, yeah. directors, editors. Exactly. Yeah. Tim Russ has done on at not just acting, but production and writing on several of the series that are out there. Mm-hmm. Six. 
the fan production must be non-commercial. CBS and Paramount Pictures do not object to limited fundraising for the creation of a fan production, whether one or two segments and consistent with the guidelines, so long as the total amount does not exceed $50,000, including all platform fees, and when the 50000 goal is reached, all fundraising must cease. The fan production must only be exhibited or distributed on a non-charge basis and shall and shared via streaming services without generating revenue. The fan production cannot be distributed in a physical format such as DVD or Blu-ray. The fan production cannot uh, be used to derive advertising revenue, including but not limited to, through, for example, the use of pre- or post-roll advertising, click-through advertising banners that is associated with the fan production. No unlicensed Star Trek-related or fan-produced merchandise or services can be offered for sale or given away as premiums, perks, or rewards, or in connection with the fan production fundraising. The fan production cannot derive revenue by selling or licensing fan-created productions, sets, props, or costumes. Seven, the fan production must be family-friendly and suitable for public presentation. Videos must not include profanity. Don't, don't worry about that list of stuff. It's just, yeah, just make sure it's PG-13. That's, that's effectively what it's saying. Right. Um, if you want to, if you want to read the full list of seventy thousand things, go to the page and read it. <laughs> PG, PG, not even PG thirteen. Yeah, PG. Yeah, because PG thirteen um, us. Yeah, and, and then the basically page. they tell you what you must include on it, and then you cannot register your work, and you cannot imply association with or endorsement with Paramount and CBS. The screen themselves. Yeah. Well, I can look. I can understand. Honestly, I can understand where they're coming from. I, I don't agree with it for I a second. Too. Not for a second, but I do understand where they're coming from. Well, they're worried about losing their copyright. Yeah. Well, considering but what happened with Klingon yes. language, are you, do you blame them? But the thing of it is, I blame them this- for not not producing Star Trek for so long that the fans basically said, screw you, we'll do it ourselves, and now they're having to um, treat the fan community like crap to, to try to to reverse it. Yeah. But the thing of it is, we can go down these guidelines and point out point by point um, how many, uh, before this list came down, how many different fan productions would technically be in violation of that. Star Trek Phase 2 had the click-through banners on their website. Um, All ads believe... were ongoing in more than half an hour or 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah there's there's a, lot oh, of, yeah. a lot of the fan stuff. Actually, to be honest, I the only thing I can think of that is a Star Trek fan film that doesn't breach these rules is Galaxy Quest. <laughs> I did a funny... <laughs> and uh, I turned uh, somebody into a dog, apparently. Rough. <laughs> rough. Uh, uh, it's just my dog wanting attention. So, so anyway, okay. so let, let's go down. I've got the list in front of me of the uh, aftermath, and this is on um, axamonitor.com. It's also linked on uh, facebook.com slash safe sci fi. Just scroll down a little bit, you'll find it. So this is the aftermath updated as of um, three days ago, two days ago. Um, Absolution um, suspended. Aurora suspended. Axena continuing believes it has fair use immunity. Just for the record, Axena, you're insane. Um, mind you, this is, considering how far they've gone with it, I don't blame them for just forcing their way forwards. Um, Dark Amada suspended. Um, Diplomatic um, Relations, which is an audiobook, suspended. Um, Equinox, suspended. Farragut, um, awaiting clarification. 
Hengula MD? Okay. Suspended. Intrepid. Um, suspended. Um, Lost Frontier. Removed. Gone. It's gone forever. Um, Melbourne thinks it complies with the guidelines. Um, Nature's Hunger thinks it complies with the guidelines. Outpost suspended. Pacific 201 um, thinks it provides with, it um, complies with the guidelines. Uh, Project Potemkin. Potemkin? Project Potemkin. It's Project Potemkin, yes. Yeah, uh, believes it complies with the guidelines. Renegades, no did, longer a star. Didn't, this... uh, didn't they die at Wolf 359? What? The Potemkin? I thought the Potemkin. Uh, moving on. Yeah. Melbourne. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Um, Renegades is no longer a Star Trek project. I want to touch on Renegades again in a minute. Um, what they're doing is what they're doing is really interesting. Um, Saladin suspended indefinitely. Um, Section thirty one files, all episodes gone. Starfinder suspended indefinitely. Star Trek anthology suspended indefinitely. Star Trek Constellation suspended indefinitely. Star Trek continues um, is awaiting clarification. Star Trek the continuing mission suspended indefinitely. Star Trek New Voyages slash Phase 2. Website down. Official status unknown. Star Trek Shadows of Tyranny. Suspended indefinitely. Yorktown. Suspended indefinitely. So, yeah. As you can see, all, what they've successfully done is just run a scythe through all of these different fan yep. projects that were in the works. And just decimation. Decimation everywhere. Now, what... Now I want to go. We'll go back to Renegades now, really quickly. What Renegades is doing is really, really interesting. What they've said is they've turned around and they've gone. Look, the, the large chunk of what we were doing wasn't Star Trek anyway. Like it can happen without Star Trek. So as a result, we're going to get change the keep everything in the story the same. Change a couple of character names. Change a couple of ship designs, and boom, done. Moving right along, and that's effectively what they're doing. Um, they're... Yeah. So, while... So, as a result, they're sort of setting up their own um, sci-fi universe now, which can be viewed as a good thing, it can be viewed as a bad thing, one way or another. But they're like, we've got a responsibility to the people that supported us get this far, so we're going to keep pushing forwards. We just won't be Star Trek anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, um... Okay, so having having done that and, and created you know my own universe and 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 taken it to production and gone through that process with nobility, um, you know, power to them. I hope they can pull it off. Uh, I would be very concerned because they are literally, if they are not already in the middle of production, they're like a day or two away from production. Yeah. So if this like a month or two out, you know. I, I, there'd be no, I, I, I'd say, sure, it can be done, be a little stressful, some headaches, but, you know, okay, so the nacelles on the ship look a little different, you, you know, you handle that in post, and you swap a few names around, and, and, and just take Star Trek off of the Renegades thing, sure, but that's a huge shift to make Mid in the middle of production. Um, if they had already shot stuff, then, like, if they've already shot something, they're going to have to go back and reshoot it because, you know, the uniforms, like, they just released a bunch of images uh, with, like, all their uniforms and stuff, and they're very Trek. Now, if you take the the insignia off, you know, it could probably look very different, but you're having to take the insignia off, and if you already shot stuff, that means, you know, I think, I if I, I want to say they're, like, four or five days into production, and if that's the case then, um, you know, that's four or five days they're going to have to completely redo uh, and, and take, like, for example, and like I said, take the, the Star Trek insignias off and, and things like that. So, or I guess they could do it in digital and post, but but that, that's that, a major headache. Yeah, that was going to say, that would be an absolute clusterfuck nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little bit better than having to reshoot depending on how much they're paying the cast and the crew, but yeah. still. 
yeah, and also the availability of the cast and crew. But yeah, you're um, so so I and um, yeah, and so so I would be very concerned as to uh, whether or not they're going to be able to to pull that off. I hope they can. Power to them. Uh, you know, and, and you know, I'm I'm in touch with many of the folks over there. You know, anything I can do to help, but um, I, I it is a concern. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's just it sort of disappoints me. The one thing that Star Trek has that literally the only thing I know of that comes close to Star Trek in the way the fans treat it is Christianity and Star Wars. <laughs> Oh, don't forget Apple. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Apple. Can't forget Apple. <laughs> That's a cult. <laughs> Apple's like, like the, the insane cultists out in the desert who are like about to take the sign out. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, we've got the Kool-Aid, guys, and it's not just any Kool-Aid. It's I Kool-Aid. Apple brand. <laughs> um, oh, and don't forget the Jedi Knights in Britain. Oh, yeah, the Jedi Knight Temple. That's hilarious. Oh god. But yeah, anyway, the point is those guys. The, the thing that's kept Star Trek alive for so long, for fifty years, is its fan base. Fans. Is the yes. fans that come back. It's the fans that support the show through thick and thin. Well, less thin, more thick, but that's not the point. And the fans that sort of create their own little stories that sort of may or may not fit into it. And yes, um doing what they're doing is catastrophic to that in pretty much every way shape and form they look at the list of destroyed projects telling a story in 15 minutes yeah. is not easy unless you're doing <laughs> family guy or the simpsons which is just a formula um well the other thing the other thing that was pointed out is in 15 to 30 minutes how much character development can you do in that amount of time exactly That's okay the point. can answer that question yeah the best you can probably hope to get out of something like that is a Darth Maul, that Darth Maul short film sort of story, sort of. But even then, you wouldn't be able to do that because that's a one of the main Star Trek characters and you're not allowed to use those, so... Yeah. But if, yeah, it's... Something like that might be possible, but at the same time, it's very unlikely. Like, And unless you're doing literally a character of the week series of stories... You know, and how long is it going to take you to develop your cast? Exactly. With how many of those short episodes? Exactly, and you can't even really do that because you're only allowed two episodes in the same in the same story. So even if you do a character of the week, that would be very difficult to pull off. But then it would be an anthology of the same thing. So yeah, <laughs> which would be against the rules. So yeah, and. Like, I, I do understand why they've done it. From their point of view, they're covering their ass. Because these fan projects are getting better and better and better and harder and harder to tell from, lack of a better way of putting it, real Star Trek. Um, so, it's effectively, what they're doing is, like I mentioned before with Christianity, they're almost doing like the purge, where they're getting rid of the Protestants. They're getting rid of all the ones that don't quite follow the the same sort of thing as what they do and it's just to sort of unify the story in one place um now it's I'm, the inquisition yeah but well, just without the murdering hopefully <laughs> but anyway um now that I've stretched the Christianity analogy about as far as I possibly can <laughs> but yeah the, the point is that well that was one of the things that that you know kind of made me you know a little smug about Trek is like the fact that the fans were not only passionate enough to do that, but CBS was cool enough and has been cool enough for, you know, 50 years to, to let people do that kind of stuff. And, you know, they only have themselves to blame why people are putting so much effort into the fan stuff because they haven't been providing the, the, the stuff that the fans want. Exactly, and maybe with Beyond, and maybe with the new series, they can turn that around. But we don't know yet, and we're all, all we're getting is it's a 50th anniversary. We're trying to celebrate, and Paramount's just basically reaming all the fans. It's like if you're gonna do this shit, at least wait until after the 50th anniversary. You know, yeah. wait, wait. Like, uh, like uh, I understand why it's happening now, and it, and to be honest, in some respects, it 
it is the fault of Axena. In a lot of respects, it's not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming them. For the record, it is not 110% their fault. But they did play a role in what happened. Um, they started pushing things a bit far, but I, it has more to. I think it has more to do with that. Yeah, they were pushing things, but at the same time, Paramount was watching these fan tracks become much more popular than the big ten pull they were trying to pull off. Yeah, but they only got their, but, themselves to blame. So exactly, and that was and, and, and the thing of it was, and the thing of it was, Alec Peters went to CBS and said. Here's what I'm doing. Can you give me guidelines as to what I can or can't do? And they wouldn't do that. Yeah. And that's and one of the reasons other, why other a thing... lot of people are blaming him. Because they're like, well, if he didn't go to them and ask for guidelines, that ever would have put any guidelines out. No. So, mm. No. What 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 it is um, is they were pushing it. They First off, they are pushing it quality-wise. The quality was getting too good. Second off, they were selling merchandise. They were selling it was Axonar merchandise. It wasn't Star Trek branded, but it was it was based off of Axonar, so they were selling merchandise. The and, but and they were had other ones doing it. And they were also they were also building a sound stage, from what I've heard. And you're right. And and, and so I think um yeah, and you're and you're right, they uh, Eugene that they weren't the only ones doing that, but the 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 fact that they were the ones who were getting to the level where they might actually start competing and taking money away from um, uh, from uh, uh, CBS and Paramount. And also, I think this is something that they've been watching over the past few years. At get, it get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they kind of not been liking it and haven't been figuring out what to do. And then Axon was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. So All right. that's that's my plan, but All right, Stuart, it is time to jump over to the news really quickly. You have literally a minute. Okay, we <laughs> so we know we had one Brexit over the weekend. Apparently, over now we had a second one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, England got knocked out of the Euro tournament, um, soccer tournament by Iceland. Paul. That awkward moment when the island is further away from the continent than you knocks you out of it. It's also the first time that Iceland's actually made it out of the group stages as well. <laughs> awkward. A little bit. They want it out. They, 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 yeah, they want it out. <laughs> uh, so the last week I got a ton of Star Wars news um, with Rogue One with the Entertainment Week getting a massive um, scoop. And we learned some really interesting um, details about it, such as who Forrest Whitaker's character is in it. Ooh. He's going Hi. to be playing Saw Guerrero, a character from the Clone Wars TV nice. show. Nice to see them actually the... tying the live-action stuff across to the cartoony stuff. I was wondering if they were going yes. to do that. Well, now we have official confirmation that we do. Sweet. You guys realize that the next Star Wars movie is going to completely and utterly suck, right? Yep. Yeah. Don't care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, because because they they're they're forcing. I think they're even bringing in a new director to go back and like reshoot it because it was too dark. Yeah. So, so. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this week because I we sort of talked our way through Stuart's news time. We've got a minute uh-huh. left, so I'm going to do the outro now. Thanks for the news, Stuart. No problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for joining us for the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. Um, this has been the crew. Just shouting out to everybody. Make sure you check out facebook.com slash nobility the series. Is that right? Something like that. Yep, facebook.com slash nobility the series. And also um, Facebook facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom. Yep, that's normally my second shout out. Check out facebook.com yeah. slash save sci-fi for all your sci-fi related stuff. Check facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast for all of your sci-fi podcast related stuff. Um, make sure you check out Perry and County. Perry County Hobbies. Yep, you bet me to it. Perry County Hobbies. <laughs> make sure you go to check out Perry County Hobbies. They're definitely worth a look. And make sure you look up the podcast on YouTube and iTunes and Stitcher and where all of the different podcasts live. Um, so we will catch you this time next week. Bye. 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 Bye, all.
box it maybe for next week. Yeah, yeah, we'll do the news next week. Yeah, so. I don't, I don't know what, my, I don't know what my uh, shifts are next week. What my uh, shifts are next week.